Itong uh, nakarang uh, mga dalawang linggo, uh, eh, yung mga opo ang isa sa ating uh, madalas na guest po dito sa ating uh, Talk News TV at sa Journeys, ano? uh, si Ambassador Jose B. Romero. Siya ay uh, uh, 84 na taon na nung Yumao, which was very recently. No? At uh, iyan po si Ginoong Jose Romero, Ambassador Joe Romero. Uh, at uh, we will uh, we are uh, having uh, I am personally paying this tribute to Ambassador Joe Romero and uh, we remember him and his many achievements of course uh, I also want to uh, especially remember uh, the one who has worked very closely with him si Jude the young executive director ng uh, Philippine Council for Foreign Relations so ito yung post niya si Jude Romero Smith you know? at uh, sabi niya bye bye for now Bye for now, Tito. No, no. We'll surely miss you big time. Hope at least I could have make it up to you, but time came too fast. Well, we all uh, have the same feeling. And daming ginagawa po ni uh, Ambassador Joe Romero. At ako'y uh, nadala po na sumali at uh, tumulong sa Philippine Council for Foreign Relations. Dahil sa aking nakita uh, kay uh, Ginoong at uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Joe Romero. Isa pang uh, tribute na uh, nakita natin po sa Facebook eh, from Joe Kalump Ron Kalumpang. Ano? Uh, quoting uh, Jose Romero, uh, the quoting uh, uh, one of the ambassadors uh, that the, who writes in the Manila Times, uh, in the ambassador's uh, corner. Uh, sabi din ni Ron Kalumpang, Ambassador extraordinary indeed. I will miss our really long lunches, which is what I feel also. We had our discussions and long lunches, uh, stories uh, of boyhood and mischief, of nation building, diplomacy, patriotism, charity, and piety, and so on. So here are some images of uh, the hardworking Ambassador Jose Romero building uh, our relations with uh, ASEAN, China in particular, of course, China. Uh, the, this is uh, the welcome dinner for the Chinese People's Institute of Foreign Affairs. The next one is dinner with uh, Ambassador, uh, uh, Deputy Chief of Mission, Madame He, uh, Xiang Qi, who is back in China now. Uh, these are the various activities uh, following uh, within the ASEAN uh, China Center that uh, was set up and graced by the uh, presence of Ambassador Joe Romero. Uh, But Ambassador Joe Romero was not just an ambassador of the Republic, but an author, a very prolific author. Some of the books he has written, I, I show you uh, uh, stories of his family, uh, of the coconut industry, of which he was a leader. He was a uh, uh, chairman of the Philippine Coconut Authority. Uh, he wrote a book on, Philippine economy, on the Philippine uh, political economy, uh, and uh, of course, uh, He uh, wrote a, col a series of columns uh, uh, in the Manila Times, which we will uh, take a look at a little later on. So these are some of the books uh, of Ambassador Joe Romero. He is not only an author and a diplomat, but also an economist. Uh, and uh, he was part of the economic cluster of the Philippine Council for Foreign Relations. Uh, um, He was uh, also an international public servant. Um, let me see if I can find this. He was uh, also part of the um, uh, Congressional uh, Economic Planning Office. Kasama po ng ating mga esteemed uh, seniors who are, have also moved on. Si Ding Li Chauko. He was also uh, a founder of the United Coconut Association of the Philippines. He was uh, chief of mission in Rome, uh, where he was executive director of the UNCTAD, UNCTAD Common Fund for Commodities and Permanent Representative to the FAO, Food Agricultural Organization, and International Fund for Agricultural De uh, Development. In the business world, he served as chairman of Abacus Consolidated and Holding Company, and he sat uh, with the Southeast Asian Advisory Board of Rolls-Royce Aerospace and Power Corporation as a senior consultant. So that is uh, Joe Romero. And let's take a look uh, at um, some of his writings in the Manila Times. Uh, if you can take a look. Uh, a, I have proposed that we come up with a book of all his writings. 
ano? And his last, uh, his last column was uh, dated uh, August. Uh, it's dated August 4, 2018, just uh, two months ago. Uh, Sinophobia and false illusions. And lastly, we have uh, an image of the family, uh, uh, of the Romero family, and uh, an image of uh, one item we discussed and was subject of my interview with Joe Romero, Hari Salahi, uh, Hari ha Sahari Lahi Salahi, a movie done by, uh, produced and directed by his brother, Eddie Romero, about Philippine-China relations. Uh, I have two uh, interviews which I will show now. Uh, please uh, roll uh, the first one at uh, his birthday uh, of 2017, uh, or just uh, a year ago. It's not every day that uh, anyone gets to be 83 and surpasses one of the most critical tests of time. Uh, the, uh, as uh, the song our guest will sing later on uh, says, how do you mend a, a broken heart? He also has, uh, with flying colors, as you can see, uh, weathered a heart bypass. But uh, more importantly, he continues now to serve our nation in foreign affairs, in foreign policy, and of course this is none other than Ambassador Joe Romero on his 83rd birthday here in one of the restaurants at uh, uh, Barrio Capitolio along East uh, Capitol Drive. So uh, we thought uh, it would be very uh, interesting to uh, hear the views of our uh, birthday celebrant, uh, Ambassador Joe. So Joe, 83, how does it feel? I feel like uh, I'm uh, 38. Yeah, and uh, yeah. You, you a while ago you just said you feel better than you were when you were 18. Well, I feel a little bit better than when I was 15. 15, but then you followed through with a, I'm a liar. I'm a liar. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what uh, do you see at age 83 <laughs> about uh, our nation, our future, uh, and uh, our relations with our neighbors? There is a lot of change going on. Well, the um, country has already broken away from its roots. It has already cut off the umbilical cord that tied us to our former colonizer who uh, more or less dictated uh, our uh, policies, not only foreign policy but even domestic policy, trade policies, all sorts. So, you know. so I, I see a mature maturation of this country in terms of uh, foreign policy initiatives. The um, um, Duterte's uh, independent force and policy approach is uh, really uh, something that uh, is uh, long overdue. Long overdue. And um, I think uh, we are now following the path because in any case it's now a multipolar world and um, the dynamics you know, foreign policy is such that uh, you cannot cling on to the apron strings of one nation like we used to do in colonial days where the colonizer is uh, the one that's uh, more or less uh, dictating the, how we live. Uh, you were one of uh, those uh, early birds, so to speak, uh, advocating this uh, re re-engagement with China. That took some courage uh, at a year or two ago when uh, maybe this was not too popular. Uh, what yeah. did you feel through that time and is, is today a vindication? Well, uh, as a student of history, let's go back to 1970 when Marcos broke the ice with Uncle Mao and Imelda kissed him on the cheeks, if you remember. It's quite, quite an uproar. Uh, Marcos was, uh, had a foresight, he had a sense of history. And um, so he uh, broke the ice and uh, that is actually the starting point of the warming up of relations. This was just interrupted uh, by uh, uh, the, the events in the last administration, uh, unfortunate events in the last administration. Filing of the case, which ruffled the feathers of China. But then uh, 
after uh, Marcos, uh, Corey also uh, went to look for her roots in uh, China, if you remember. And um, she was warmly welcomed. Uh, and uh, so the, the relationship continued, um, in a, probably in a slower pace than it is today. And then comes um, uh, Ramos. Ramos also, uh, well, uh, yes, Ramos, a uh, member, uh, had very strong links uh, with uh, China, maybe more uh, with Taiwan than with the mainland. But uh, there was this uh, engagement with China in, in both trade and uh, politics and so on. Then comes uh, GMA. Well, uh, remember GMA was associated with uh, failed uh, uh, in the Northern Railways and the Southern Railways project, the UA, yeah. that one. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. But the fact remains that there was a consensus between the two countries to begin the uh, development of infrastructure in the Philippines. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, one of the significant uh, developments then was the joint marine seismic the survey. seismic yeah right uh, significant and a breakthrough but aborted again later on aborted again yeah mm -hmm. so there, this has been a series of uh, uh, engagement with china getting warmer over time until there was this uh, uh, um, unfortunate uh, misunderstanding between the past administration and the uh, Chinese government uh, over the uh, South China Sea issue. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, your family, of course, uh, is known to be uh, uh, pioneering in many fields. Uh, your elder brother, or is it the elder brother? Or your elder, elder, elder brother, brother yeah. Uh, the national artist, uh, Eddie, Eddie Romero? Eddie Romero, Eddie Romero, right. Romero uh, produced, uh, directed uh, the uh, uh, Story Harry, Harry. about the uh, Sultan of Sulu the, yes. who traveled, Sultan uh, Paduka Patara, yes. traveled to China in uh, 1517. This is the 600th uh, year. This is the 600th year, yeah. Mm. And, um, well, uh, he seems to uh, uh, be a harbinger also of the uh, good uh, or restoration of uh, relations of China and the Philippines. Yes, there's still a lot of goodwill, really, between the two peoples, which goes back a thousand years, as we know. So, uh, Eddie, who's a study student of history, my brother uh, came across this uh, Hari Nang Hari uh, plot, Sultanate of Sulu and the Chinese uh, emperor, and uh, he made uh, a classic out of this. Uh, what do you see as the domestic, domestic policy now, and uh, is it different from before, drastically? Uh, because uh, well, what is very clear uh, in the na na national discussion is the independent foreign policy. Yes. But in terms of that, as an offshoot of a domestic policy, what is that domestic policy? Well, domestic policy is to increase levels of productivity, mm -hmm. income, and employment. Okay. Now, this can only be done if you develop your social overhead investments, and your mm -hmm. physical infrastructure, which China is providing. That's right, that's right. So uh, the, the, more and more, the Turkey's gambit towards China is rooted from his concern for uh, domestic policy and to improve the life of his uh, constituents. You certainly are um, articulating his uh, unarticulated philosophy more than uh, uh, what I hear from his uh, uh, spokesman uh, from the DFA. But uh, anyway, we won't... Uh, uh okay, so that's Joe Romero. And his words will continue to ring in our, uh, in our hearts. Uh, and uh, he has not left us, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, all his uh, words uh, are there for us to uh, review and uh, be guided by and uh, his, the institutions he has built, like the Philippine Council for Foreign Relations. Uh, he is with us and will continue to guide us. Uh, here's one last uh, interview of uh, maybe three or four other vi video, uh, videos that I've done with uh, Ambassador Joe Romero. And this is our discussion about uh, his brother's work, uh, Hari Sahari, 
Lahi Salahi. Uh, and uh, so he did not only do all this diplomatic work, economic um, endeavors, uh, but he, he was also uh, very concerned to promote our uh, cultural uh, legacy. So uh, here's uh, Joe Romero uh, as we talked about the movie Hari sa Hari, Lahi sa Lahi. Magandang gabi po, uh, Ginoong Joe Romero. This is a very uh, interesting afternoon for many who are now here at the UANP uh, Auditorium. And um, uh, you uh, sponsored and organized this showing of the Hari sa Hari, Lahi sa Lahi, uh, a story about the uh, the visit of the Sultan of Sulu to China in 1417. This is very timely, but uh, what made you uh, put this together? Well, uh, basically, uh, to, uh, as a testament to the uh, uh, history between this uh, long history between this country and China, which uh, uh, started about a thousand years ago. Yes, yes. A uh, thousand years ago, uh, and it's timely because uh, at the time when we are trying to do some um, confidence-building measure with China, it's important that uh, uh, we understand each other. The, this new generation, uh, the younger generation, is not very familiar with the history of China. So uh, this is a, a reminder to the, this generation that uh, there is a long history of uh, uh, social, political, and economic. Okay, so uh, Ambassador Joe will always be uh, here uh, carrying on your uh, mission and uh, uh, we won't be missing you because you will always be with us. Thank you very much and uh, have a good weekend.